Hello, I'm Alexander, and today we'll take a look at Softier's Volume S in ear monitors. I have heard many interesting things about Volume S and I'm excited to have it on my desk today. Many thanks to the Softears team for making this possible. Volume S comes in a large beautiful box with the illustration of the IEM on the front of the box and frequency response graph along the list of technical specifications on the back. Inside the box we have Volume S in-ear monitors, leather case, two sets of silicone ear tips, a modular cable with 3.5 mm and 4.4 mm interconnects, a tiny screwdriver to change the IEM impedance, a microfiber cloth, a fabric pouch, metal card with a serial number, QC card, information leaflet and a user manual. And that's quite a lot of accessories. The shells of Volume S are average in size and they are made out of two parts. The soft touch medical grade resin and aluminum faceplate with carbon fiber insert. There is a model name engraved on the left faceplate and the company name on the right faceplate. To a naked eye, it might look like there is a gap in between the lower part of the carbon fiber insert and the rest of the aluminum faceplate. But this is intentional, as this is actually a vent. On both carbon inserts we also have a tiny potentiometer that changes the IEM impedance and we'll get into this later in this review. The nozzle diameter is 5.5 mm, the nozzles are on a longer side and there are three sound bores at the end of the nozzle. There is neither lip at the end of the nozzle nor a metal mesh to protect the bores, so I advise you to regularly inspect and clean the ear tips. The two pin connectors are located on top of the IEM, they are recessed, making the connection safe and secure. The IEM comes with a fabric braided modular two pin cable that is 1.2 meters long. There are two pin connectors on one side and the modular connector on the other. The cable has a metal splitter, plastic cinch slider and comes with two interchangeable terminations. The 3.5 mm and 4.4 mm balanced. I'm not a big fan of paracord wrapped cables and from my experience they are microphonic, which is also the case with cable on Volume S. On the other hand, modularity adds a lot of flexibility, the channel indication on two pin connectors are printed on the inside part of the connector and that's a clever idea if you ask me, as it makes the IEM look more discreet when the cable is connected. Now let's briefly talk about fit and comfort, and this is where Volume S shines. It is one of the most, if not the most comfortable universal IEM that I have ever tried. For me, everything with this IEM is perfect. The shape of the shell, the soft plastic, the nozzle length, nozzle diameter and the weight distribution. I did not experience any discomfort or fatigue during long listening sessions, so in this department it's 10 out of 10 for me. But as fit and comfort is very subjective, take all I just said with a grain of salt. Now let's briefly talk about the specifications. The Volume S is based on one 10mm dynamic driver, one 6mm passive dynamic driver or passive radiator if you will and two balanced armatures, one of which is responsible for mid-range, another one for the treble. The IEM also has the low latency conduit technology implemented, which means it is using the shortest possible audio tube length to reduce the sound travel distance. And the Volume S is also is using a so-called bus impedance technology, which alters the overall IEM response rather than altering specific frequencies. Volume S has two tuning modes, which soft ears calls pop and classical, and the modes can be switched using the potentiometers located on the IEM faceplates. The adjustment tools, which are tiny screwdrivers, are also included in the package. In the low impedance mode, the impedance is 9.8 ohms, 
and the sensitivity is 124 dB. In high impedance mode, the impedance increases to 31.2 ohms and the sensitivity decreases to 114 dB. You can easily drive volume as with the majority of sources in both modes. But I would mention that using a source with a low output impedance will benefit volume S. In addition, the IEM scales really well with a good source. Before we talk about the sound, please note that all sound impressions in my reviews are completely subjective. You should take them with a grain of salt. I have spent three weeks with this IEM and I did my tests both in the low and high impedance modes. So let's talk about low impedance mode first. In this mode, the volume S is bold, rich and its tonality has blown me away. The IEM is dynamic, coherent and sounds very engaging. The bass is full, well controlled, has a great extension, a good impact and punch. Moreover, the bass details are just phenomenal and I was able to distinguish the notes even in busy musical pieces, which was impressive. I wouldn't call it a bass heavy IEM, but both sub bass and mid bass are well pronounced and this worked especially well for my current music library. In addition, the bass is fast and tactile, the notes are clearly outlined and in my opinion, the bass performance is exemplary. The mid-range is full and lush and there is a bass bleed into mid-range, but it surprisingly works in favor of mid-range presentation. So let me explain. On many IEMs, the bass bleed is considered a negative thing, as it pushes out the clarity and definition of the lower mid-range. But it's not the case with volume S, as low mid-range here displays a fantastic full character that contributes to the overall mid-range definition. Vocals and instruments sound great, and the mid-range timbre is good. The upper mid-range is not as hot as on some other IEMs, still the upper mid-range displays a great balance between energy and solid presentation, and it has never been harsh or grainy in my case. The treble is interesting as well, it's well extended, but slightly soft and rounded, which makes not so well recorded music sound slightly more coherent and well glued together. With the well recorded music, the treble really shines and it maintains a good balance between clarity, detail retrieval and definition. Volume S is not a detail monster, but its treble still has a quite a lot of air and sparkle not to be considered wailed or recessed. Such treble response perfectly corresponds to the overall IEM tuning and it sits well in the mix. The soundstage is surprisingly wide, with a good spacing between instruments, so recordings with well-designed sound landscapes sound breathtaking. The soundstage is also deep, which helps a lot with layering and instrument separation, both of which are great. So in this regard, this IEM leaves a lot of competition behind, and I'm giving it 10 out of 10 in this aspect. Volume S also performs exceptionally well in competitive games, where sound clarity and a strong sense of distance and direction are crucial, and it really gives you the competitive advantage. Now let's talk about the high impedance mode. The high impedance mode changes the tuning drastically. The bass becomes less prominent, but still maintains a good level of detail. The low mid-range is partially losing its thickness and lush character, while the upper mid-range becomes more upfront and hot. The treble gains more energy, which results in a more sparkly and open treble presentation. Based on my tests, when switched to the high impedance mode, the volume S becomes much less forgiving. Also, high impedance mode is not as universal as low impedance mode, so it will suit some genres much better than others. Myself, I had a positive experience with orchestral soundtracks, classical and contemporary classical music, while, for example, my experience with rock and metal music in high impedance mode was a mixed bag. Also, in high impedance mode, you are getting a lot of energy in the upper mid-range and lower treble, so it can be borderline sibilant for some people. As an example, the string instruments become so sharp you are literally feeling the bow hitting the strings. Such a sensation is clearly not for delicate ears. 
But if you can tolerate sensations like this, it's a very interesting experience. Overall, I think adding the second tuning was a great decision. While it's not exactly a groundbreaking idea, I really appreciate that Soft Ears is open to experimenting with different options. Giving listeners the chance to choose between two sound profiles adds a lot of flexibility and makes the experience more personal. Let's summarize. I was pleasantly surprised by Volume S tuning and performance and I can see it easily become my daily driver. Its coherency, full-bodied presentation, great tonality and fantastic fit is an ideal choice for both casual listening and more detailed and analytical sessions. Pros, excellent design build and choice of materials, the fit and comfort is fantastic, two tuning modes, great set of accessories, lively and full sound presentation in low impedance mode, great bass response with phenomenal details, lush and full mid-range, rounded treble with good level of details, fantastic soundstage width and depth, and a very nice carrying case. Cons? I just couldn't find any flaws with this IEM, at least not for me. But if you want me to nitpick, I will mention that I am not a big fan of power cord cable, so I'd prefer to have a different cable. Another thing I would like to mention is that the high impedance mode is not as versatile as I expected it to be, but that's a mere nothing. The Volume S truly excels with well-recorded music thanks to its coherent driver configuration and driver implementation. However, at $319 US dollars, it is still a considerable investment, so I recommend testing it first to ensure it meets your preferences before making a purchase. That said, I can easily recommend it, as it stands out as one of the best sounding IEM in its price bracket. And that concludes my review for today. If you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Thank you for joining me and until next time, goodbye.